Hey guys, my name is Nick and welcome back to the channel. And in this video, we are building the Armager Warglaive. So straight fresh from the unboxing from the Forge Bane set, I am going straight uh, into the uh, Armager Warglaive Knights, which I kind of said I did. I've, I'm a big fan of the old Knights and any new Knight model is a welcome addition to my forces. So in this video, we are going to be going through the build. So uh, let's crack straight into the video. So as usual with my build videos, I do tend to run them at double speed or maybe a bit quicker, just depending on the uh, the moment of the video. But uh, So we'll start by looking at the frames then. So you can see that the Armager Warglaive comes with four frames. The pieces uh, for each don't actually really match the instructions too well, so it's not like you've got a leg frame, which is the first couple of pages and then other bits. You do need to hunt around and try and find the right parts to the instructions, which is you know pretty normal. They try and maximise the space on the frame and that's what we end up with. So the shin pads are on a different frame to the leg pads, for example. Uh, so once we've got the uh, the sprues done, it's time to cut all the pieces out and work through the instructions. And as always, always uh, test fit the pieces before you glue them together. So the two leg pieces uh, are actually keyed slightly different because they are at a different angle to enable the model to be posed and walk correctly. Uh, once we've identified which bits are what and test fitted, make sure we're happy that all the uh, mold lines and flash have been removed and so on we can start gluing them together as you can see I'm just going to follow pretty much most of the instructions in this video but there are sections where I'm going to be leaving them off deliberately uh, to enable me to paint them separately so for example the uh, the top shell the shin pads the uh, leg pads and the uh, the shoulder shoulder guards are all going to be left off um, because I'll be painting those a different colour to the sort of the metal undertone of the uh, of the chassis itself. So uh, just clean up a couple of little bits here. Every now and then you do find you miss bits, especially when you're doing it to camera. Um, it's quite easy to miss bits. So uh, using my handy Exacto scalpel blade, just cut some of those bits off. Um, these are sort of the leg stabilizer bits that sort of energize the legs. So you can see sort of little mini reactors that go on the back of the legs there, uh, just for a bit of added detail. One thing that you don't get on the larger knights is that kind of thing, but they are, you know, the the legs are a bit more powerful on the uh, on the larger knights, and these are supposed to be a bit more nimble and agile. So having those sort of energy sections in the backs of the pistons kind of makes a bit of sense, really. Now, if you were really clever, you could um, play around with some of the posing of these. I'm actually going to keep them stock straight out of the box because basically I'm quite lazy. Um, but you can cut the lug off the bottom of those uh, those leg pieces, and you could easily trim around where those knee joints are and readjust the pose if you really wanted to. I don't think it's that big a, a difficult deal if you're pretty good at cutting uh, in a nice curved arc. But you could do it, that's what I'm saying. It is possible if you wanted to uh, articulate the legs that a little bit more. So move into sort of the hip joint section. So this is very, very similar to the larger Knight kits. You've got sort of two halves to the hips and then you've got these undercoil parts uh, just showing some sort of uh, power movement, I guess, from the, the main body uh, energy reactor all the way down to the legs. So there's a couple of halves of those, and then there's a, uh, a top cover section that goes on over the top of that. Um, yeah, nice and uh, nice and simple, just to make sure you put that little bit of glue underneath where those cables go in, and uh, you're all set. Then we can move on, and we can put the little top cover on, which is uh, where the, the top of the body will join into the hip section and then this will uh, connect the two legs together. So uh, quite a, a well-constructed uh, model, really. And if you look at the two sections where we're going to join the legs to, so the the, the section uh, uh, left and right. Now, the legs are ambidextrous. You can put those on left or right-sided. So you could have the, uh, the left foot striding forwards and the right back or the other way around. So they do uh, fit in either side. So... Uh, yeah, universal legs, quite a nice idea. So if you've only got two knights that came in the Forge Bane set, for example, you could have them looking uh, slightly different. I think that's a great idea. And then once they're uh, set off, just put them on a little base just to make sure that everything's all square and hunky-dory. And we can put that section aside for now. Now just a little note, there are some leg pistons that go into those sort of hip areas. I didn't do that on the video because they are very, very fiddly. You will need a set of tweezers to try and get those in properly. Um, but they sort of mirror the larger brethren of the Knight family. They've all got those little uh, joints as well. And that's the little, um, the sort of the groin guard here. And I'm not going to be attaching that. That is the section in the instructions to attach. But I'm not doing it here because I'll be painting that in a separate colour. Now we can move on to the main torso itself. 
Um, so we've got a bottom section and two halves. I'm being stupid there. That is the wrong way round, you idiot. Turn it round. Please turn it round. There we go. That's better. Much better. Uh, that's why you always test fit, because if you're being having a bit of a, a, a Friday morning moment uh, and, you, uh, and you can't tell your left from your right, that's what happens. Um, but now, now that I've got that sorted, you can move on and glue those together. Again, this if you've built the larger knights, you'll see some familiarity here. This is uh, exactly the same order and uh, components, really, other than the scale and the size, really, of the larger larger versions. They do have exactly the same looking bits, which I think is a really good idea and uh, sort of ties the models in. You don't want them being too different, really. You want them to make sure they look like they come out of the same factory. A little bit difficult to try and force this rear section in to be aligned. So actually in the future ones that I've built, I actually put the left panel on first, then put that rear panel on, and then put the right panel on. So if you're uh, following along to this video, don't put that right section on. Put the back section on first, and then put the right section on. So a slight different order to the way the instructions tell you to do it, but it did make it a little bit easier in subsequent builds. Because as you may be aware, I'm actually building four of these, not one. So... Uh, um, the first one I've built to video and the other three I've obviously built um, separately to the video because I don't want you seeing the same thing four times it would be a bit boring for me and equally boring for you so that's the top shell section that will go straight over the top where the pilot sits again exactly the same as with the uh, the groin guard section I'm not going to be gluing that on because um, I want to paint that separately so we can now move on to the exhaust section so the big engine exhaust that stick out the side um, slightly different to the larger um, larger knights. Uh, with the larger knights, these stick through that top shell canopy, but these uh, these go round the outside. So uh, nice and easy, just a two part, and then stick them onto the side of the chassis. So we just move on to the second one. Just make sure you get it the right way around. It does only go one way around, but um, each half of those um, can go on either of those exhaust sections. Um, they're uh, they're not unique to um, to which side you're doing. So you just got two little lugs and they would just go on like that, so uh, don't put it upside down because that would look silly. But I just wanted to make sure that that top section easily would fit once those exhausts were in, because I didn't, couldn't quite tell until the exhausts were glued on whether the top shell needed, uh, you know, if it fitted underneath in some, some kind of way, in which case I would have left the exhaust off. Um, but as you can see, it fits nice and snug even with those attacks, so no problem there. To leave the top hatch, uh, top cowling off of the model. Now, we, before we put that top section away, there is a small hand grab rail for the pilot to uh, to go on. Uh, it's a very thin little piece. Um, there are actually a lot more hand holds on the larger version of this, but this has got a single one there. There's a grab rail for the uh, for the pilot, for the, no, the lesser noble who drives these war glaives. So just stick that in there, and then we can put that fully aside. Oh, and it's popped out. Nope, there we go. It's back in. All good. And now we can just leave that to dry and uh, and move on with the rest of the stuff. So there's a little bit of a nose cone section there that sort of tidies the front end of the model up. We can put that on, and that sort of where is where the head will house underneath there. But again, I'm going to leave the head section off just for ease of painting. But we'll put the uh, the three components together for the head um, before we uh, leave it to one side. So there we go, that sort of tidies up the front end of the uh, of the Warglaive and then we can put that chassis section aside for a little bit as well. So we can move on to the weapon mounting now. So the, uh, the, the Warglaive comes with two weapons, well it comes with three weapons. It comes with a chain cleaver, a thermal spear and a heavy stubber. And the thermal spear and the chain cleaver are the arm wep weapons and the heavy stubber sits on the top of the model. And uh, these are ambidextrous, you can actually have the uh, uh, the chain cleaver on the left or right-handed, and obviously the opposite for the thermal spear. And uh, these sections look very, very similar to the uh, the larger knights as well. So you've got the two halves of the the sort of the shoulder bracket, and then you've got a, a piston section, and then that connects into the weapon. And while I was looking at those, I thought, you know what, I'll just put the two head sections together as well because they were just sitting on the desk. I thought I'd get those out of the way. So there's two halves to the the head. And then you get a, a choice of four heads in the kit. So uh, you do get to vary the uh, the war glow. So we can see there, I've got all four of the heads open uh, to choose from. And I'll just pick the first one and stick that on the front of that um, head construction set. So uh, 
If you're making more than one, obviously it'd be nice to have a little bit of variance unless you want them all to look exactly the same. Um, but you know, you've got four heads to, to choose from or four faces to choose from. So that just pops on the front there like that. Nice and easy. Let's go back to the weapons then. As you can see on the screen now, we have um, all the different weapons. So we've got the, uh, the thermal spear and the chain cleaver. They come in two halves each. And then you've got all the different bits to actually mount those into the shoulder brackets. And uh, as I said, these are ambidextrous. You can run these left or right handed. And there's a whole load of movement in these as well. If you don't glue them together, um, where it tells you to glue, wait, where it doesn't tell you to glue, sorry, you can actually leave these. So they all do move around. Uh, so you can see there that sort of section moves up and down quite nicely. And if you don't glue that properly into the, um, the side of the chassis, you can make that sort of rotate as well. So let's do both of those sections and uh, just put that second one on there. Now it's up to you really whether you want them to have that poseability. I'm not really fussed. I'll actually probably glue them in place at some point. Um, but it doesn't really make any odds. But it's nice to be able to sort of leave them loose until you get to the uh, put the weapons onto the model. Then come up with a really cool pose and then perhaps just glue that pose in place. Rather than having them all wiggle around all over the place. I'm not a big fan of all sort of the moving parts of, uh, of my Warhammer models. I just think it's a little bit um, gimmicky, but you know it's nice to have the option to be able to pose it and then glue it into place at the end. So the chain, uh, the chain cleaver um, has sort of two parts that uh, allow it to be mounted into that bracket. Make sure that you don't glue the two parts together before that bracket's in, otherwise it won't uh, won't attach properly. Now at this point, if you really wanted to, you could actually magnetize this section. I decided not to magnetize. Um, there are no other weapon options for this model at this time. I suspect maybe they might uh, have something else come along in the future. But uh, but for now, I'm just going to go with the uh, stock options and not bother with the magnetizing um, potential that you could do. You'd actually have to cut a bit of the plastic off and, and do, some, uh, do some clever things there, but it's not a difficult job to magnetize where the weapon goes and uh, onto the bottom of the weapon mounts before it goes into the shoulder blade. But now you can see the, uh, the thermal spear is done and you can just rotate those around and put them left and right onto the, onto the chassis. So you can see here I'm just putting them on and just test fitting and you can see the movement in there as they sort of move around. Finally you've got that other weapon option on the top so it comes with the heavy stubber which does cost some points and you've got the option of a melter gun as well. Big thing about those is the difference in uh, gun types. So the heavy stubber is a heavy weapon and the melter gun is an assault gun. Um, so if you're going to move and shoot, then obviously you're going to have uh, an impact to your uh, ballistic skill if you try and move and fire with this model. So probably, in my opinion, the melter gun is the better option. So there we go, just sort of test fitting, make sure everything all goes nice and, and neatly together. And all we've got left to do then is cut out the rest of the armor panels that's the big shoulder um, shoulder pads, uh, which you can see on the screen now, just coming on. And then we've got two sort of upper leg sections, and then you've got two ankle protectors as well. And that will wrap up the build. And as I said, I'm not going to be putting these bits on because these will be painted the same as the um, the groin guard and the top cowling section. I'll be painting those separately, so I'm keeping those off, and then we'll glue them on once the model has been painted. So there we go then guys, that is the Armager Warglaive fully built. Well, when I say fully built, I've left deliberate sections off in order to assist with the painting. Um, and I suggest that if you're going to be doing this kind of model, then you probably want to do the same as well, really. It really will, will help with you painting um, to keep those bits off. Um, and then you can easily glue them on um, once you've uh, finished painting all of the chassis work and any details that you want to do on that. And you can keep the armour panels off for as long as you like and, uh, and get those done and then stick them on. Hope you enjoyed the video, hope you learned something new, and if you did, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I shall catch you guys on the next video, where we'll be painting it. Yay!